Daniel chapter 11, verse 9, and I'll put the link up so you can get the previous lesson, but we're going to continue what we learned last night. Daniel 11, 9. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return unto his own land. But his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces. And one certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress. And the king of the south shall be moved with choler, fierce, heated anger. There's even a disease with heat and fever. And shall come forth and fight with him. Even with the king of the north, and he shall set forth a given multitude, a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. Now what we're going to read now is what we talked about last last night is a a, a double application. It's prophecy. And yet here we are in 2022. It's also history. And what we're going to read to you is the historical fact or historical evidence. But we also have a type here of what's going to happen in the tribulation period and events leading up to the tribulation. And the very fact is that with history being rewritten and everything today, what we do see is history does repeat itself. That's according to the Bible. So we have... Verses 9 to 11, we have his kingdom, which could be also his land, verse 9. As most will explain this way. The kingdom is Syria in the north. And his land is Egypt, the land of the king of the south. That's how Larkin reads it in his rendering. Now the king of Egypt comes into the kingdom. But he returns to that land, and that land is notable from the kingdom by his own, by his word own, by what we read the word own. Now, you take for the fact is, uh, I'll use President Bush, you know, I know this word surety. President Bush is located in, when he was president, Washington, D.C., but he's from Texas. Ronald Reagan was president in Washington, D.C., and yet his home was in California. He had a, a, a homeland, would have been Texas or Florida, or the, uh, each of the uh, presidents had their homeland. But they are based out of Washington, D.C. Now, they may go to Poland, they may go to Russia, they may go to England, they may go to Florida, they may go to Canada, they may go all over. But their base, their kingdom, is out of Washington, D.C., but their homeland, their place, is where they grew up, is where they were born, is where they live. So Larkin's reason, 11 verses, uh, chapter 11, verse 10, we have, but his son shall be stirred up. And the question is, whose son? Because it can't be the sons of the king of the south. Because that king goes out to fight with one of those sons, 1111. So we say a child went against his father, a son went against his father. That's not the case. The son is the king of the north that attacks the south. So... Verse 9 is a summary of the verses that we did 7 and 8 last night. And if you remember, Paul to me, and remember we talked about Cleopatra and all that, Paul to me 3 goes into Sicilius 2. Now remember, Paul to me 1 was, was one of the generals of uh, Alexander the Great. <clears throat> Alexander died. 
Ptolemy got into Egypt, that was land. So Coleus was one of the generals of Alexander. And he got the uh, Asian minor. And we're looking at now their children. So Ptolemy III goes into the Sigilius II area in destruction. And after Ptolemy goes back to Egypt, his home, leaving Sicilius II behind. He didn't kill him. He went in there and attacked. He went in there and, de and defeated. Then he goes back home. There's a time we're, we're going to read that we're going to study. That the Antichrist comes into Jerusalem. Then he leaves. King Saul comes against David and he hears there's a battle at home and he has to leave. Because I, I, uh, I don't know if that, that what's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet, so I'm not going to say nothing. But there, there are cases and there is history where they come in, they battle, they fight, or they're prepared and then they leave. That's the Antichrist. And Larkin's reason for what Paul to me did was to suppress an insurrection. And it's kind of funny that you mentioned the word insurrection, and we just recently, last year, in December, uh, January, we had an insurrection at the Capitol. Where men and women for Donald Trump went and crossed the lines into the White House illegally with guns. And I heard the other day the report that there was a, a vehicle near the White House that had weapons. And they're trying to figure out what do we do? They're having all these. You need to charge them with a crime and you need to banish them out of America for war crimes. But you let them go like Barabbas. History repeats itself. Interesting. So now we ha now we get to the death of Sicilius. I'm saying these wrong these names wrong, and I apologize. Two, he dies. He has two sons. You imagine what one of the names of the sons is? Sicilius three. And Anticus, A N T I O C H U S three. The army was summoned to evade Egypt. Hold on me. And the Bible says, One shall certainly come, 1110. Antiochus, however, I'm probably going to say it different every time, I apologize. Antiochus 3. If you remember, Achilles 3 was poisoned by the generals by the acts of his wife that he was going to divorce to marry Cleopatra. Remember that? We don't call it the days of our lives. We don't call it the movie clear fact. We call it the King James 1611 AV Holy Bible. That's what we call it. The Word of God. Hollywood and Satan in the world stole from the Bible to get your money, Christians, that you're foolishly wasting your time on movies when you got it in the Bible. Okay. And Catechus 3 overflowed Holy Me 3 in the area of Lebanon and Palestine. The fourth Syrian war ends with a great battle of Ptolemy IV. <laughs> why, do, why do we have this Rocky one, Rocky two, II, Rocky three, II, Rocky four, II, Rocky five, II, Star Wars one, II, Star Wars two, II, and Star Wars eight, II, Star Wars the Godfather one, II, Godfather two, II, God because this is an imitation. Of what the Bible and the Bible tells us that there, there, there's this man and then he has his children and they're all battling and remember it does not have to be names it could be titles 
I mean, they got Pope John the Third, Pope John the Eighth, Pope John, and that's not their real name. Even the names of the Pope. Their names have been changed to protect the innocent, I guess, or something like that. So we have history working. And the Bible, God said it was going to happen by Daniel. By the way, this, let me tell you right now, Daniel. Daniel was written between 607 B.C. and 534 B.C. And I got a date coming up here somewhere I know, when we come to it. So the Fourth Syrian War ends. The Great Battle of Ptolemy IV versus Antiochus III at the Egyptian garrison at Repa near Gaza. This would be in 1110, his fortress. You see, it's the Bible. We're not making the Bible read to what history read, because when the Bible wrote this, history has not been written yet. When it said, out of Bethlehem, Ephraim shall be, you know, the, the, the prophecy of the birth of Jesus. Jesus wasn't born. Ptolemy IV was a weak king. Weak. He moved with color. You just read that in chapter 11. Against Antiochus, out of character. So when he when the Bible makes the fact is that he moved with color, anger, fear, that was not the character of Ptolemy. Now this winning. Antiochus multitude, 1111, was not given into his hand. Scripture, 1112. And when he has taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many tens of thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. And the king of the north shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former. So a second battle, a second war. More. And shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of the people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount and take the, take the most fenced city. And the arms of the south shall not withstand, neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. And he said, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand what's going on. But you can learn all the men on a baseball team. You can learn all the different throws of a football. You can know all the characters of Disney. You got to go to every movie. You got to go to every concert that person. But you can't sit down and go with the Bible and history. Your pastor cannot take his time to study the Bible and history to properly sit at that podium, at that pulpit, and discuss to the sheep Bible food. I'm going to tell you, the number one reason why this is not taught in the Baptist churches because your pastor does not know. He was not taught. His church did not teach him. His seminary did not teach him. But they talk, oh, how to get good offerings. How to get much people inside your church. You know, when I went to school to be my doctor, I didn't have that crap. The crap that uh, at, the, at the churches today, if you, teach, if you teach and preach the Bible to what it is, you're not going to have many numbers. If you are faithful to that one book, your offerings are going to be, you're going to just pay your bills.
these big churches and these churches today, you know, if you give the people what, they don't say it like that. You know, there are King James Bible-believing churches out there I've been taught. They'll go to the pulpit with the King James Bible, and they're only doing it because the people like it. They don't believe it behind closed doors. It's for the people. And then thus the sheep are not getting fed. So verses 12 to 15, Paul to me, it's victory at Repna, Repnia by Gaza was a great casting down of many tens of thousands. 11, 12. A lot of people died. History will record that. And then pride, the lifting up, set in. That victory, oh, look how great I am. And you've seen that with the pharaohs. You've seen that with even Israel. Joshua, we did so good at, at Jericho. We don't need everybody to come on. Just a few people, we can get AI. History will repeats itself. You ever read the book of Judges? They're doing great, then they fall. God sends a judge, they, they win, they do great, the judge dies, and then they do terrible. <laughs> Judges is a book of history repeats itself. They did not follow through in the victory of for this by lifting up his heart to pride. So he was not strengthened because God is not going to reward the pride. Take that as a lesson, America. Take that as a lesson, Mr. Donald Trump. You're not going to win with God with pride. Now, maybe with Satan, because Satan is the king over all the children of pride, but not with God. So the death of Ptolemy IV and Caiaphas III invaded Lebanon and Palestine, the fifth Syrian war, 202 to 195 B.C. Daniel was written 607 to 534 B.C. Almost 300, 400 years ago, Daniel wrote to what we're looking at in history right now, and there's yet still these prophecies going to be after the church is gone. Oh, we're into prophecy, we're into prophecy. And what about Daniel? Oh, the lion's den, the three children in fire. Well, you know, this is boring. Yeah, I know. And you know what? You know what much of life is? It's boring. I don't like to read all the names and chronicles and all the numbers and numbers. Yeah, and there are things in our life, you know what? I don't want to do it. But you got to do it. There's no excuse. You gotta wait in line at, at the fast food restaurant to get your hamburger, fries, and drink. You ain't just gonna sit down at the table and there's your drink. And even if you had a waiter or a waiter, you still gotta wait for that meal. Okay? So the, it ended the Fifth Syrian War and Kildia's victory over Egypt at the Battle of Penuum. It's all in the Bible. It's sorry that your pastor doesn't want to teach you these things. You know what a lot of churches don't know? You know what a lot of churches are not interested? History. You know why the church is failing today? Because they don't even know church history. I know church. We'll pray for the Catholic Church and all that. We're going to do the we're going to do the Catholic traditions. I'll tell you what, you never read Fox's Book of Martyrs. If you're saved and you get to heaven and those martyrs come up and kick you in the hiney for supporting the church that killed them, I'm going to be up there kicking too because my family went to hell by that church. Sign my name to that. Many Many, we read, stood up against the king of the south, 1114, with Antiochus, with Philip V of Macedon. Now, you've heard about Philip V in history. Now, i got a question with you. 
How many of you have not been homeschooled but in, been in the public school system? Hello, me. How come you didn't read about this history? Why is this history totally... I never heard about that. It'd be great about the great lie of Washington cut down the cherry tree. Dad, I, I didn't mean to tell a lie. I, I, I cut the tree down. And with the great lie of Betsy Ross and the American flag, which these idiots believe. How come that? Because if you were to teach this in the public school system, you would have to go into the book of Daniel. You would have to go into the Bible. You know for sure the public school systems do not teach about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, but they give the Arabians, they're giving Ishmael, they're giving the, the, the Muslims the time. What about Isaac? I wonder what the public school system in America is teaching about the land of Israel. And the Bible says if you curse Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're going to get a curse. And then you wonder why the kids are shooting each other. You wonder why the teachers are having sexual relationships. You wonder why your teachers are queer. You wonder why your kids are failing. So, many stood up against the king of the south, 1114, and Ancus with Philip V. It was an alliance to take and divide the territories held by Egypt. The South. North and South. Rome, okay? Rome is now entering the picture. She's not big yet. She's not this massive empire yet. But she issues an ultimatum not to invade Egypt. So she's young, but she's also now crept into the politics. She's crept into the government around 200 B.C. Here she is. Now with Rome stepping in and being who she who she is. Now who do you think the next chapters, I mean, excuse me, the next verses in the chapter are going who do you think that's going to aim yourself at? You say, well, yeah, well, let's just get to the Antichrist. No, let's get to the history that brings us to the Antichrist. Do you know right now it's a possibility, as close as we are to the rapture, and there's no dating the rapture. Do you know that, that the Antichrist may be in government right now? He may be doing what he needs to do right now. You say, well, well. these men... Anicus three and Ptolemy four and Philip five. They they didn't they weren't born and boom and here's history now being made. They had to live life. They had to grow up. They had to train. They had to have a lot of victories. They had to have a lot of failures. And then there was a point in time that history has followed along with prophecy, as will the Antichrist. Remember, we learn, 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 learn that God is very patient. What we've seen, God's taking forever. God's like a thousand years is one day, and one day is a thousand years. Okay, so we got the robbers of the people. Now, all agree that the, the people are the Jews, Hebrews. Now, Larkin says that the corrupt Jews that troubled the Jews <laughs> were in alliance with Antiochus against Egypt. Curry favor with Anicus in order to gain positions of power once Anicus was in power. So when Anicus is going to win, I'm putting the name wrong again, I'm sorry. When Anicus wins the battle against Egypt, the Jews are going to step in and they're going to overpower. And Anicus killed these robber Jews once he had the victory over Palestine. The problem is for Larkin is, and this is what we're going to get, there is no evidence that this event ever happened in history. There are things that are, Larkin's a great man. There are things that you're, that 
a pastor, a preacher, a Sunday school teacher, a missionary, a evangelist, they get up and they say something and it never happened. I'll tell you one of the things is, and I've been in a lot of churches and they're preacher stories. And I learned about preacher stories when I was in school. And what it is that there are these basic stories that preacher tells and they apply their life to it. They fill in the blanks that it is them, and it's not them. And I've caught four preachers with the same story. The names change to protect the identity, and it's a lie. And Satan is the author of lies. He's the father of lies. You can't say that is holy. I have no right to, to get up and say, I've done this, I've done that, I've, done, and I've never done it, but it makes it great for an illustration. If you've got a great illustration into a story, put other characters in it. Don't put you in it. If you've never done it. Don't ever say, well, I've done it, and you never did it. Lies are coming out of the pulpit. They shouldn't be. But they are. And there are other views which there are no evidence or facts. You see, the problem with that is, all right, robbers are the people. I can't tell the truth. Well, what's the truth? I don't know who they are. I don't know what it is. And for the preacher and the pastor and the scholar and the, and the educator of theology, it's a sin to say, I don't know. So they fill in the blanks. And if they were to hand that paper to the teacher, he would mark with a big X. But there's no teacher. There's no one sitting there except for me. Who will question? I heard a I heard a, a instructor one night. He's giving a lesson about fear, and he said there are three hundred and sixty-five fear knots in the Bible for every day of the year. Now, first of all, you don't even have the King James Bible. So I'm going to call that the question. And I went home and I got the program. I put the brackets fear not, and I showed you guys the other night. There isn't three hundred sixty-five. He say, are you going to go up and tell him? No. If he watches the video, he'll learn that. But why doesn't he go study it? Why doesn't the pastor say, all right, somebody said something. When in doubt, aren't you supposed to check it out? So the fact is, he'll get up in his pulpit. Oh, there are 365 fear knots for 365 days a year. And there isn't. Why didn't you check? You're a liar. All right, now I'm going to call you on other things you say. That's the problem. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. I'm not, listen, I'm not afraid to say I'm borrowing someone else's brain. That's allowed. 1114 is a possible future event still. Ezekiel 722, there are robbers entering the secret place, the Holy of Holies, to defile it. And this is going to happen, look at 1131 of Daniel. And the arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Scripture with scripture says it's even yet a further event of the Antichrist. Now something may have happened in history for us. That we don't even know. And what happened, the people that do know or lived it, it's going to happen again. You know how many times over and over the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Abraham, I mean, uh, Solomon builds it. Well, well, Moses builds a tabernacle. 
Solomon builds the temple. Ezra builds the temple. The Antichrist is going to build the temple. Jesus is going to come and build the temple. History repeats itself. Eleven sixteen. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land, we know what that land is, which by his hand shall be consumed. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his kingdom, I mean, excuse me, of his whole kingdom, and up right one sh with him thus shall he do he shall give him the daughter of women corrupting her but she shall not stand on his side neither be with him and after this shall he turn his face to the isles it has to do with the, the places in the Mediterranean and shall take many but, excuse me, a, pr a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Without his reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Eleven sixteen is a historical defeat of Palestine by Anakus. The glorious land is the promised land, found in Daniel eight nine. The upright ones are the Jews, who supported Anakus against Egypt. Now they weren't the the uh, what was it the robbers. There were Jews that helped Anakus to defeat Egypt. 11, 18, and 19. The end of the reign of Antiochus failing the throne of Egypt through his daughter. He wanted that throne in Egypt. He brought in his daughter. History records. The Bible records. And it came out to be a failure, like the Bible said. You would think that these men would go to the Bible. You think the man would bow his head and say, Oh Lord God, will you show me about this the plans I have and what and have God have open up to Daniel and say, That's you, brother. Invades Greece 192 BC. 192 BC. Daniel's written 607 to 534 BC. 400 years back. He invades Greece in 192 BC and is driven away by Roman army. Here comes the Romans. Manus Galibro. Then he's defeated at Magnesia, Asia Minor, by Scorpio Asicus, the prince. 1118, which produces the reproach of Anarchus to cease, like the Bible says. Anarchus ran to the capital of Antioch of Syria. And they're not called Christians yet. The fort of his own land, 1119. Anarchus is not, he's not Egypt. He's of Syria. He's of Asia Minor. The, the, that land that Alexander the Great had, now he has. He goes back to his home, his fort. And it goes downhill from there. Like the Bible says. He tries to get a treaty with Rome for peace, the Treaty of Anthonia. Notice Rome is now in the picture. Last holdings and conquests of Asia Minor, he loses it all. 
to Rome. He pays heavy fines, heavy money, heavy. Elam, the nation's people, they kill Antiochus at the time he's tried to loot their temple of Baal. Baal is a god that is with Daniel's time. Belshazzar. You know the, the, the lying hypocritical books of the Catholic Church of uh, Bell and the Dragon? <laughs> Wait a minute. He's in a temple of a Babylonian god and we are reading about a man that is in Babylon and his name is given over to Baal. And the Catholic churches, I mean, excuse me, and the Baptist churches can't even see that they are in the Catholic Church, Rome, with their holidays and their traditions. And I can't believe there's a Baptist church that said, you to pray for that church when you drive by it. History is repeating itself. And the dumb Baptists don't even know it's doing it. You say, what is this period of time that Stiley is calling Baptist Catholic? Well, I don't know the name of the church. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. I should get it. But there's a church of the seven church age period. It's called Much Marriage. You say, what's that? That's when Constantine came in. He says, we will give you the Catholic gods, the Roman gods, and we will keep your gods. And we'll intermingle your, your services and our services, and we won't kill you no more. I'll even give you a Constantinople Bible. It's not the Bible, but it's a Bible. You know, a man that professed to be virgin born, and he saw the cross in the sky that, that God told him, go and conquer. Yeah, he conquered. The lad to see in church age is, hey, there's nothing wrong with the Catholic Church. What about the Fox's Book of Mars? What? What's that book? What about church history? We're not interested. No one's interested in that style. One pastor tell me that. We're not, we, we don't need to know that. Okay, fine. You know what I was taught in school? One of the lessons. If you're about to die in the faggots, that's a stick they tie you to. Let's say it happens. And you're going to burn for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Bend over as much as you can and inhale that fire and smoke to get rid of the agony of, of, of suffering to die early. Today, the churches, you know, they got people with guns armed. Well, the guy comes walking, the church, anybody here a Christian? I'm going to stand up and say, I am, sir. You're going to die. I stand in a long line. So he's at the temple of Baal, and he's trying to uh, Baal. He's trying to loot it. He's trying to steal things, and he's caught, and he's killed. And the Bible says he shall stumble, and fall, and not be found. Well, what's to not be found? I'm going to assume, and I didn't check this out. I'm going to assume you can't find where his grave is. Maybe. I could be wrong. Maybe you check out. Well, they know where. Okay, maybe. All right, the living. They, they wouldn't be able to find him living, but maybe you can't find his grave. They said, I mean, Moses' body, you can't find it. You can't find the body of Jesus Christ. You can't find the body of Moses, you can't find the body of Jesus Christ, a prophet likened unto Moses. Scripture. 
history repeated itself. You couldn't find the body of Moses, and they can't find the body of Jesus. History repeats itself. That's why they're trying to change it. 